people are so hurt and destroyed by who he is, you guys should be able to hear better now. Uh, that, that he's been so held back in his life. Never mind the fact that if people were so racially against him, then he wouldn't have one of the most sought-after jobs in the entire country. He has gone there by the level of his own skill, not his color. And that's the same way that everyone makes it in this world. And a lot of times, your skill and hard work isn't noticed even if you're the very best. So he should consider himself lucky. But no, he doesn't. Instead, he praises a butcher. The, there, are, there are few world leaders who bring more mixed emotions to mind than Fidel Castro. The former leader of communist Cuba has been equally praised as a liberator and condemned as a mass murderer. Yeah, he liberated you already. He destroyed your once vibrant country and slaughtered people in the thousands. Some Cubans were saddened by Castro's death. Others, others had conflicting emotions. As History.com will tell you, Castro first rose to power after overthrowing the military dictatorship of Flagencio Batista in 1959. Of course, we know the history from there. Um, he had a rocky relationship with the U.S. And I think it's interesting that a lot of the people on the left praised him because he was a thorn in the side of the U.S. He was a thorn. He didn't stand up to us in some great, brave way. He almost started a third world war with the Cuban Missile Crisis disaster is what he did. And he sided with the communist Russians who were absolutely butchering and slaughtering their own people and holding them in communist dictatorship uh, grips. And yet, nothing. He's praised as some great leader. That's because secretly the people on the left despise this country. They literally hate it. They shouldn't even be here. And that is why they praise everybody that's against us, even if what they do is absolutely dreadful. Unless, of course, that person's Vladimir Putin. And again, we've gone over her. I don't think he's the greatest man either. Castro's cause of death is unclear, though Heavy.com noted that his health has been in decline for about eight years. His brother Raul will rule Cuba in Fidel's absence. But uh, Kaepernick made, uh, sounds familiar, it should... The state, the star, excuse me, athlete recently refused, as I mentioned at the beginning, to stand for playing of the national anthem at the start of the 49ers game. His reason to protest the oppression of violence against African Americans have faced recently at the hands of police. Um, never mind the fact that what we've seen here over, and that's not good because this one will give any problems. What we've seen here over and over again with him is standing up for people that have been an absolute butcher. Okay? The the African American Brown that was that was killed. Do you want to know why Brown was killed? Brown wasn't killed because of police brutality. Brown was killed because he robbed a store, another minority, he was an Indian by the way. He robbed a store and then charged a police officer. That is why he got shot. Second of all, what about Trayvon? Going into Trayvon. Trayvon attacked a man and the man killed him. Don't want to be killed, try not attacking people. However, Kaepernick cannot seem to uh, come to terms with something as simple as that. He spoke highly of the former Cuba president. He also acknowledged some of the darker days of Castro. That's like saying, well, you know, Hitler had some nice things. you got to remember that, you know, which oddly enough, unfortunately, he did. A uh, high school teacher traumatized male students with steamy backseat sex, cops say. When I use something like this, maybe it's, maybe it's bad. I wish I could have been traumatized this way in high school. That would have been really, really nice. I, I would have probably ended up a much happier young lad if I had been able to have been traumatized that way as a kid, but no. Uh, this week's female English teacher and cheerleading coach busted for traumatizing two different adult male students. Whoa, whoa, what? Listen to this. Investigator Sagatir, as 25, had sex with one of the students in the backseat of a car in the Shell gas station parking lot, according to Houston NBC affiliate uh, KPRC-TV. 
She had sex with the other student in the same back seat in an apartment parking lot, according to court documents. There were a handful of romps over a year and a half, investigators say, including a back seat heavy petting session at some special secluded spot by the side of the road. Now listen to this. These students were 18 and 19 years old, respectively, at the time of the alleged, alleged trysts. Eligible for military service, but not able to have sex with a teacher of Texas because law flatly prohibits educators from having sex with charges of any age. Listen, it's a non-issue. Quit tying up our tax funds. The girl did nothing wrong. They were adults. 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 Mind-blowing here, friends. Uh, moving on. The Daily Caller, the News Foundation, OSU diversity officer, apologizes for the terrorist in a Facebook post and urges sympathy. <laughs> Making Christophe choke over here. Urging sympathy for the terrorist. Please have sympathy on the terrorist because you know he's had it so hard. Never mind that he just killed innocent people. Let's coddle and make excuses for the butcher. This is awful. Ohio State University Assistant Director of Residence Life. Interesting name, title oddly enough. Ironically so, Stephanie Clemens Thompson may have urged sympathy for suspected Monday attacker Abdul Razik al Atan in a Facebook post. post. He was a Buckeye, a member of our community. If you think it is okay to celebrate his death and or share a photo of his dead body, and I see it in my timeline, I will unfriend you. I pray you find compassion for his life, you know, the murderer, as troubled as it clearly was. Think of the pain he must have been in to feel that his actions were the only solution. Aw, oh, we have come together in this time of tragedy. Oh, yeah. Let's have sympathy for the butchering bastard of OSU. Unavailable she was for a comment to the press. I bet she was. Apparently repeated urging for her friends not to share the Facebook post, suggesting she was aware of the controversial nature of her language. Nah, there's nothing controversial about what you did. You just st stood up for one of the worst people in the last year to make the news cycle. A piece of human filth that took innocent life. You're supposed to be an educator, someone who nourishes life. But no, no, we're going to have sympathy for the butcher. And that's not the dunce cap of the month. Nope, nope, nope. It gets even dumber. Um, this is what we've got here from Breitbart. Dump Kellogg's far left cereal giant Kellogg warns of racial privilege. You know, I wish I had some of that racial privilege. I don't even have water right now. You shut the water off in my house. It's part of my great white, vast uh, white privilege, I guess. I'm still waiting for that to kick in. I'll let you know if it ever does. The Kellogg Company, famous for its breakfast cereals, is giving far-left activists hundreds of millions of dollars to promote left-wing uh, projects, including white privilege and structural racism. Now, isn't it interesting that uh, they don't stand up for the president when he gets uh, sacrificed in a mock ritual on stage? They, they don't stand up for uh, the rights of all people, just all people unless you're white. Remember that the next time you should like Kellogg's, Kellogg's or maybe something else. Maybe go with something else. The company's project to promote coming to grips with racism was touched as its American Healing Conference. Yeah, more divisiveness. Whenever they name it one thing, you know it's the opposite. The conference promised to move the conversation from hope to possibility. In an article on the webpage, the WK Catalog Foundation, the activist NGO sponsored by the Kellogg Company, states the racial privilege and structural inequalities have influenced America and are at the core of nearly everything that America has done. That is the stupidest thing that I've ever heard in my life. For one thing, while America was entangled in the evil of slavery, America was the first country to outright abolish slavery. 
and it was done so largely by whites, it should be noted. Since the birth of America, racial privilege and structural inequalities have influenced the nation's policies and social systems from health care. Yeah, because I you always hear about black people being turned away from the emergency room, right? Go home. Go home, blackie. We don't want you. Said no one ever, nor should they, because that's not the way people think. Education and child welfare. Well, that's not true since there are a large number of African Americans on education and welfare assistance. Food consumption, well, so we don't feed black people in America, we let them starve on the side of the road. Justice and countless other facets of life. Well, Kellogg's, if you're worried about people starving, maybe of any color, and of course you are the breakfast food giant worth how many billions of dollars, maybe, maybe, instead of spending money on left groups that do things like praise Fidel Castro, you could give some of the food to the poor. Maybe you could fund initiatives to feed the poor instead of helping leftist groups fight for a racism that doesn't exist. Maybe then even white people like me could have water in their house. That would be a novel idea. No, instead, the foundation goes on to claim that the nation is racist without even realizing it. Oh, now we have accidental racism. It's like drive-by racism. This paradox is routinely denied by its individual and institutional perpetrators, and sometimes even by its victims. But the impact is real. This is what their foundation writes. The social consequences of discrimination can be devastating for everyone as it targets struggle to overcome barriers from artificial constructs. The only artificial construct here is that you believe in racism of which there is virtually none in the country, you stupid bastard. All right, friends, and that brings us to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Oh, there's the theme music playing loudly and proudly. <laughs> Oh, it sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Just absolutely captivating. Once again, I'm brought to you by the day the lights went out. It's a book by D. Alan Ross. Find it at Amazon. Very funny, very worth the read. And uh, leave a comment. Thank him for sponsoring all the correct views. I love that we have authors on the show because we live in a country where most people are too stupid to even read. All right, friends, here's what we've got. Dunce Cap of the Month, retired professor predicts mass human extinction from climate change in 10 years. I like what Alex Jones says. Uh, he always changes these kinds of headlines to retired professor predicts human extinction from the Easter Bunny in 10 years because it's just as real as climate change. And for those of you that don't know, the, the global warming thing has been dispelled long ago. Man is not warming the planet. There are a plethora of scientific studies and data to prove this. Man isn't doing it at all. It's called the sun. The sun goes through cycles, and it's been doing this since way, way, way before the combustion engine. Okay, It's so simple, even Christelle can understand it. Oh, sorry, Christelle. I mean, she's like right there. But um, really, it, it has nothing to do with human activity. Otherwise, it must have been human activity that was causing it to happen before humans had fully tamed the planet. It must have been what caused the dinosaurs to go extinct. It must have been due to that horrible combustion engine. A retired University of Arizona professor said the human race is heading toward a sixth mass extinction event. And it's right around the corner. The brilliant, the stunningly wise Guy McPherson, a biologist and professor emetrist of natural resources and ecology, believes in the Easter Bunny. He believes that humanity is basically a suicidal bunch and that we are destroying our planet through increased greenhouse gas emissions, a key factor in the theory of man-made global warming, the theory of the Easter Bunny. We're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're, every time they refer to that, we're just going to change it with Easter Bunny. Shout out to Alex Jones. Most carbon greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, are created when fossil fuels combust. Despite CO2 constituting only 0.04% of all atmospheric gases, 
It has been demonized as an evil trace gas that causes droughts, floods, more storms, fewer storms, illnesses, and death. In reality, CO2 is harmless, odorless, colorless gas essential for all life on Earth. But no, the Easter Bunny has come. I, I want to give a shout out. I'm going to give you five stars right here on air. <coughs> I'm blasting news here. McPherson also said giving people false hope about a better future is a bad idea and calls such talk wishful thinking. Rather, he said people should just chase after things that make them happy and try to find happiness because we're all going to be gone in 10 years, friends. All gone. All gone. McPherson had previously coined the phrase near-term extinction when he postulated the Human, the likelihood of human extinction by 2030. He also has a radio show and a blog called Nature Bats Last, which focuses on the Easter Bunny and the prospect of mass extinction from the Easter Bunny. He is even interviewed by climate alarmist Bill Nye and National Geographic Explorer 2015. You know what, friends? You cannot get any stupider than that. Something that has been proven not to exist is going to kill all the humans in 10 years. It's true. That's why I'm sending him this. It printed badly, I know. Dunce. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes to yet another bonehead who has not admitted that the science has proven the man is not in any way warming the planet. Instead, you guy McPherson have said that man may be extinct due to the threat of global warming. You could not have sounded I wrote any dumber had you said that man would be extinct due to the threat of the Easter Bunny. For failing to see this, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. May it remind you that you are a true idiot. And then I made them this lovely hat that you'll see here. Hat. And look at my penguins. I didn't do so bad this time. And I will read to you what they say. The deformed penguin says Fukushima is a real threat, not global warming. I wonder if they'll notice that. Uh, ice blocks ships in as the ships go to study no ice. That's what that little angry penguin right there is saying. And then the far one up here, he is saying, Hey, idiot, even NASA's data show zero warming. So this is going to be sent. Well, what's the latest it's going to be sent, Christelle? Saturday. Saturday. We are mailing these out. And uh, friends, all of this is paid for by you. The postage, the lights that Christelle was trying to break, everything is paid for by you. So you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Please donate every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Good night, friends. God bless. Oh, yeah. And it's your 12 days of Christmas. That means I owe you a Christmas story. I had almost forgotten. Um... I think what I want to get to today is the theory of, uh, the, the interesting fact I should say about the Christmas tree. Um, how many of you know that the first Christmas trees were displayed in the home upside down? That is true. Christmas trees were originally hung upside down. They were decorated upside down, and I imagine it was probably... Right, you can still find some trees that are mounted that way now, but I bet you that it was much harder to mount a Christmas tree upside down back many, many moons ago. But that was the way that they did it. And uh, the idea of decorating the tree came about uh, largely because they would put candles on it, which isn't the best idea to do now because you may burn the entire tree up. But uh, if you want to be particularly nostalgic and you do have running water, then you may want to go ahead and think about trying to do an old traditional tree. Um, I've done it before. I also spent hours upon hours stringing popcorn through fishing line. I have not yet put a Christmas tree upside down, although Christelle put it up so gracefully with the way she was destroying the studio that this tree could end up upside down during any of the next few postings. We can only check. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for supporting the show by donating at PayPal at the correct news at Hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless.